Welcome to the first of a series of video lectures for microbiology. Before we begin, I would make sure you have your uh, guided reading notes. Uh, this either you printed out from the portal or that you picked up in class. As we go through the video lecture, you'll want to keep track of information that will be presented on the uh, in the lab video. Most all of the uh, diagrams you need will be included, so that it should make it easier for you to keep track of. Uh, with no further ado, we'll jump right in. This first uh, <coughs> lecture is on bacterial morphology. As you know from the freshman bio problem set, all living cells um, can either be classified into one or two basic groups, the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cells are structurally similar, uh, simple and smaller in size than eukaryotes. Uh, they lack the membrane-bound organelles that are found in eukaryotic cells, as you know. Also, the genetic material is found in a prokaryotic cell, namely bacteria is what we're talking about, uh, as a single circular chromosome, as opposed to eukaryotes like you and I who have 23 pairs of chromosomes inside a nuclear membrane. Uh, also, the prokaryotes have no histones present on the, in, with their nuclear uh, nucleic acid material. The uh, bacteria can also be differentiated um, by a number of factors since there's thousands of different microbes out there, things we use to identify them. Uh, morphology, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in the next slide. That's the size, shape, and arrangement. Uh, staining characteristics, again, that's something we'll be doing this week. The gram stain in particular is the most common one. Uh, nutritional requirements, which you're studying now in the lab, whether things can use a phenyl sugar tube, uh, ferment certain sugars. Uh, biochemical activities, another thing we'll look at in the lab. Can the bug produce uh, catalase? Can it produce amylase? Other uh, biochemical activities that we can determine uh, frequently in the lab. Also about the source of energy. Where does it get its energy from? Uh, typical bacterium size, about one micrometer in diameter, made from two to eight micrometers in length. Uh, to give you a sort of sense of how big that is, a typical red blood cell is about six to eight micrometers in diameter and plant cells are in the range of <clears throat> 100 micrometers in diameter. Uh, there are three basic shapes that bacteria are found in. First, uh, you have the spherical ones, known as the coccus, which is the singular, or cocci, the plural. You have rod-shaped bacteria, also known as uh, bacillus, uh, in the singular, and bacilli, in the plural, and spiral ones, which have a couple different forms. Uh, the arrangement of the cells. Uh, depending on how many planes the cells divide in uh, and, and along which planes they divide you can, and whether they remain attached to one another, you get a number of different uh, arrangements. Here's some uh, diagrams and scanning electron micrographs that show you the most common of the arrangements found among the cocci and bacilli. Uh, cocci that are found in pairs are known as diplococci. Uh, frequently they will divide along those uh, that same plane and stay attached to one another and produce what are known as streptococci. That's the uh, typical bug you've heard of strep throat formed caused by a streptococcal bacterial infection. Uh, if they divide along two planes, you get a tetrad. If they divide along three planes, you can get a sarcinae structure. Uh, if they s divide among a number of different planes and stay attached to one another in sort of a cluster shape, that's known as staphylococci. Staphylo, meaning the, the cluster or group, like grapes. Uh, the bacilli, you can have single bacillus, uh, you could have diplobacillus, notice not die, diplobacilli, when they're attached as pairs. They could be long chains, which are known as streptobacilli, again using the same strepto prefix, referring to the chain. Uh, there's also certain ones that are found that are sort of in between uh, bacillus and a coccus, and those are known as coccobacillus. Um, Let's move on to the next. There's a couple other shapes that you may run across. There are ones that are sort of like a comma shape that are known as vibrio. Uh, there are ones that are rigid spiral shapes that are called spirulum eh, or spirula, plural. Uh, and then there's some that are these flexible corkscrew shape cells called spirochetes. <clears throat> Diagram on the right here is a typical prokaryotic cell. Uh, you'll note that there's no true nucleus, uh, no membrane-bound uh, organelles, such as mitochondria or Golgi. Also, you can see along the outside of the prokaryotic cell, uh, the outer membrane here has many, many layers. Again, we're going to look at those layers and how they are uh, help determine the identity of the cells in a little bit later. Okay. We'll now focus on some of the uh, external structures that are found in prokaryotic cells that are not typically found in eukaryotic cells. Uh, most prokaryotes secrete a substance on their surface called a glycocalyx. 
the word uh, comes from literally uh, glyco meaning sugar and calyx meaning a coat. So sugar coat is what glycocalyx would mean. Uh, this layer is sticky. Uh, it's made up mainly of polysaccharides and sometimes some polypeptides as well. Um, but when firmly attached to the cell wall, this is sometimes referred to as the capsule. You may hear that structure uh, referred to as uh, when, you, uh, when you're researching some bacteria or run across that name. The glycocalyx uh, serves actually several functions. In certain species, uh, the capsule is important in contributing to a bacteria's virulence or ability to cause disease. The capsules uh, protect uh, pathogenic bacteria from being ingested by cells through the process of phagocytosis. Uh, anthrax bacteria, actually, and uh, Streptococcus pneumonia, two that you may be familiar with, are two examples of bacteria that are actually only virulent um, when they have the capsule uh, present and then uh, they can ab avoid being destroyed by their host. The capsule also allows bacteria to stick to surfaces. As you can imagine, a sugary coat could be very sticky and makes it uh, able to adhere to surfaces. The bacteria that actually cause tooth decay, Streptococcus mutans, attaches itself to the surface of the teeth by a glycocalyx uh, structure. Uh, once the ba other bacteria can adhere in the respiratory uh, tract as a result of their capsule, which can cause some upper respiratory tract infections. Uh, flagella are whip-like appendages that are used for uh, motility, propel the bacteria. Uh, the, pl the flagella has three basic parts. Um, first one is the, the filament, which is seen here. Uh, and then the, uh, that's the long outermost piece. The hook protein, which can be seen here and the basal body, which can be seen here. Uh, those three parts are all technically part of the flagella. Uh, the basal body anchoring it, the hook is what does the rotation, and then the filament part, obviously, which is involved in like the tail of a polywog or a sperm for the actual motility. The hook protein actually can have several variations, even within the same species, and can be used to identify um, the specific strain of, of the bacteria. For example, the um, E. coli 0157H7, which caused the uh, food poisoning in this country a few, uh, few years ago, very common in food poisons, uh, food outbreaks in this country. And then this past spring, the E. coli 0104H4, which would cause the breakout in Germany of the, of the illness, which was in the bean sprouts. They differ by uh, their hook protein is one example. The H7 reverts to one version of the hook protein, and the H4 to a different one. We'll see what the O comes where the O comes from in a little later. But those two specific proteins uh, can be used to identify the bug. Uh, so we move on. There's also a couple other things uh, that you will see on the outside of uh, some bacteria. Fimbriae are, cover the surface of bacterial cells and can be found uh, all over the cell. Uh, or only at the poles. Uh, these short projections allow, again, adherence to surfaces, including the surfaces of other cells. Uh, bacteria that causes gonorrhea use the fimbriae actually to colonize the mucous membranes of the host. Uh, when the fimbriae are not present because of a mutation, um, the gonorrhea bacteria can't colonize the, the mucous layers and therefore is no longer virulent. So those fimbriae can be very important. Uh, pili or pilus, the singular, are usually longer than fimbriae, and you can see that certainly on the diagram here, this long single pilus uh, that is produced by one bacterium, is used um, strictly during uh, exchange of genetic information. Uh, the pilus joins two bacterial cells during a process called conjugation, and it's literally a tube that the DNA from one cell will be transferred to the other cell. Um, so those are two external structures we run across.